Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Die Gamma and in this video like the couple of videos I made before this I'll be again trying to solve the, the Basel problem but this method is short, sweet and right on spot like a highly trained sniper so like always let's get started Okay, so as always, I have written the Basel problem down, the, the series, the infinite sum we need to evaluate, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Now I'm slightly going to take a detour and um, remind you of a result we proved earlier, the mittag leffler cotangent expansion. Well, uh, I have probably added uh, a card about now, but so please watch that if you have any doubts regarding the mittag leffler expansion. But the formula goes like this, pi times the cotangent of pi times z is equal to 1 over z plus 2 times sum from n equals 1 to infinity of z over z squared minus n squared so if you notice the infinite sum associated with this expansion it almost almost looks like s the the sum from the Basel problem so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to isolate this sum a little bit so I'm going to take the 1 over z on that side we have pi times cotangent of uh, pi z minus 1 over z being equal to sum from n equals 1 to infinity 2z over z squared minus n squared so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 2z on that side so we have uh, pi times the cotangent of pi z over 2z minus 1 over 2z squared being equal to sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over z squared minus n squared now there is a slight problem the, the index of summing n has a negative coefficient and in the Basel problem we have positive n squared so I'm, I'm going to multiply by negatives on both sides doing that I can flip the order over here so we have 1 over 2z squared minus pi times the cotangent of pi z over 2z now being equal to sum from n equals 1 to infinity now we can correct the order in the denominator we have 1 over n squared minus z squared so this is almost the Basel problem except in the Basel problem there is no z so we want to get rid of Of z and the and the good thing is z is not dependent on this sum because just plugging in uh, say n equals zero would not be possible it wouldn't make any sense but we have an independent variable here so we can set z to be zero before doing that I would just like to uh, complete the denominator over here so we've this expression as the infinite sum being equal to the common denominator is 2z squared so we have 1 minus pi z times the cotangent of pi z divided by 2z squared and as I said I want to set z equal to 0 so when I when I do that when I look when I look at my right hand side so if you if you try to plug in z equals 0 on the, the right hand side you have a denominator of 0 fair and you have 0 times cotangent of 0 now the tangent of 0 is 0 
cotangent of zero is one over zero, which is infinity. So we have a zero times infinity over infinity situation. So it's you know not it's not feasible to directly uh, directly uh, plug in z equals zero. We can do that on the left hand side, but to be more formal with things, we need to take the limit as z goes to zero on both sides. The sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared minus z squared. And also on this left hand, uh, right hand side, we have to take the limit as one minus pi z times cotangent of pi z over two z squared. The limit as z goes to zero. So doing that, we have sum from n equal one to infinity of one over n squared. We can directly make that plugging in thing over here, and this is the Basel problem s. But uh, we we have to still do some simplification here now. A cotangent is a ratio of a cosine and a sine. So writing it as that and then taking an LCM, we end up with a two z squared times sine of pi z in the denominator. Now we have a zero over zero situation. Fair enough, but the sine in the denominator multiplied with this polynomial. This quadratic is, you know, making it hard to use L'Hopital's rule directly because differentiation we'll have to use product rule and it's really cumbersome. So, since this sign is like a like a, an extra factor that's multiplied, we can multiply and divide by pi z like that. That's because notice that as z goes to zero, pi z goes to zero, so we have limit as h goes to zero sine h over h seen. Which goes to one basically. So this entire square bracketed thing goes to one, just leaving us with a, a cubic term, which is way easier to deal with than this sine term. So we have sine of pi z minus pi z cosine of pi z divided by we have two pi z cubed, and this just went to one. Now we have a zero over zero situation again, but it's way easier to deal with because we just have a polynomial in the denominator. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule with with dignity, giving us limit as z goes to zero of pi times cosine of pi z minus pi times cosine of pi z. I'm using the product rule. I differentiated the z. Now we're differentiating, differentiating the cosine. So we have pi squared z sine of pi z divided by the derivative of the denominator is 6 pi z squared. 3 times 2 is 6. Now these terms will cancel out. We have limit as z goes to 0 of pi squared z sine of pi z over 6 pi z squared and noticing noticing now uh, this pi z we could try to recreate a scene like this you know the scene in the square bracket but we need a pi z in the denominator notice the z's cancel out so we have limit as z goes to 0 pi squared over 6 can be factored out sine of pi z over pi z and I'm doing this on purpose because uh, pi squared over 6 and then pi z just to recreate this scene over here based on this identity of trigonometric functions in limits this will go to 0 in the limit as z goes to 0 pi z will go to 0 that's why this entire thing sorry will go to 1 not 0 so s is nothing but pi squared over 6, the remaining factor. And what was s as we defined earlier? Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. There we have it, guys. A nice, elegant answer for our uh, Basel problem. Isn't it beautiful? And I believe 
this is where we end for today i hope you learned a lot with this elegant one page lopital rule limit exercise on infinite sequence okay so uh, please like share and subscribe to my channel recommend me to your friends spread the word of gamma di gamma in the math community and i would like to thank you guys for the 100 subscribers it's uh, been really nice working with you you're making videos and you feel acknowledged and uh, it's, 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 it's been really nice and in the meantime stay home stay safe uh, keep doing math don't get bored don't get tired and uh, peace out signing off